<laughs> Be ready and action. All right, at CCX, the House of Kuti. This is this your first time having the House of Kuti? This is my first time. What are your first impressions? Let me, let me get my first impression. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to pretend this is wine and I'm saying I'm getting notes of, uh, notes of, <laughs> notes of ginger. I taste the Kalakuta. Actually, it's really nice. <laughs> Actually, it's nice. I don't know why they call it House drink. of Kuti though. I'm sure inspired by it, but it's definitely, it's my go-to, that's what I always have here. Maybe, maybe because it's hot. Maybe because it's hot. Maybe that, maybe it's the heat that, that inspired the Possibly. Possibly. No, no. But it's really nice. Like, I'm sure there's a deeper story and I probably should have asked what the story is, I have no idea. But I like it. Whatever it is. I like the fact yeah. that it's cold actually because I feel the heat from the drink. It's not something that you should drink at any temperature higher than this. <laughs> it's really nice, I like it. Okay, let's get into it. We're talking about the EP. Yes. New work is out. Yeah. Tears are this tears are supposed to be salty. <laughs> tears, tears are salty for a reason. Yes, you know, you get why. Yeah. I feel like I feel like people are going to have a lot of fun with the EP. Yes. Right? So, yeah. Yes. And I think it's just going to be in good fun to them. Tears are salty for, for a reason. reason. Mm. Let that marinate. Okay. Yeah. Let's get into it. What <laughs> mental state were you in when you wrote this? Because I think that title is pretty... Profound, right? Yes, it's telling of, of a lot of thought. Uh, I feel like I was, in a, I was in a space where... Okay, let me just start like this. Like, I'm a loner, if that makes any sense. Like, I, after, I got to a point in my life where I started valuing the idea of being alone over, like, being lonely, if that makes any sense. Okay. So... I realized that I had to like, I, I used to talk to myself a lot. So I would have these conversations with myself, like I would imagine a therapist sitting with me and I would just like talk. And I realized most times when I had like deep problems or like issues and I wanted to like talk to my friends, I always have to, I used to have this voice in my head. I would be like, why are you disturbing someone else that has like his own issues with like your own? I used to always have a problem with like telling people my problems. Mm -hmm. So it got to a point where I was like, I feel like my own pain or like my own tears are probably not valid enough to like burden someone else with, you know. And then the whole idea of like the millennial slang for like salty, you know, when somebody is like salty, it means the person like is envious or like hating on you or something or like doesn't like you. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not very young, but like I shall know the meaning of salty. So yeah. tears are naturally salty. So I'm like sometimes you can feel the need to like cry because someone did something wrong to you. But you also feel like you cannot just be telling people your problems. You keep a lot of things bottled inside. But when you have like outbursts and stuff and people ask you what's the problem, I feel like they should know that the reason why I'm sounding like this is because I've had lot, a lot of like pent up like pain or like aggression. So these tears I'm crying are salty for a reason. Mm. Like that's the best way that I can put it without like philosophizing it like too much. Okay. You know, so just expressing myself in a way that if you want to listen, press play. If you don't want to listen, you can as well. Yeah. Keep no, listen. I don't have to like come and sit you down now and talk to you. So right. music was the way. So this idea of, of wanting to keep things bottled in, um, how much of that do you think is also a, a commentary amongst men in general, where you feel that it's problematic to want to share? I think it's our life struggle. And I, I, I mean, like I've been all my life, I've had like profound things happen to me, deep things, things that really warranted like me to like sit down and actually like cry or do something cathartic to like let out whatever I was spent on. But from as little as like say 14, 15 when I lost my mom, my dad sat me down and I was like, I don't want you to cry, you know. Now whoever it is that is probably happy about your mom dying, don't let them see you cry. You know, your siblings need you, all that stuff. So I was like, okay. My dad was like, I should not cry. I, I guess it's a thing. So just in a bit to impress him, it now became a thing for me. So growing up, anything that happened to me, for some reason, whether I liked it or not, I would just flash back to that moment and then I would be like, and my dad is like crying, he's strong and all that stuff. But the funny thing is during that period, I would notice that he would have some time where I would catch him like with his eyes red or I could see he was grieving. I was too young to like understand it back then, but I could see he was grieving, he was going through stuff. But I couldn't understand why he couldn't just let it out and he had to force me to do the same. Mm. You understand? So maybe his own father taught him that and then he passed it on to me. So 
I feel like we're in a place where we have to choose to like break it for like other people coming up if you choose to have children and stuff. But I feel it's it's not just me. So this project is supposed to be for for everybody else who experiences the same thing. Because I feel it's just everybody's. It's a man's story. You can be out here trying to show emotion as a guy and people will be like, man up. Like the whole expression, man up, is a very problematic expression. Or, or, or why they, why they cry? Na man you be, that kind of thing. And so it's very weird. So after, like I realize now that right now, I, I think I cannot physically cry, like right now. Mm. I feel like the only thing that can make me cry now is probably if someone like actually like stabbed me or something. Or like did something that I've not experienced before, like physical pain. But it's hard. Sometimes I feel like I want to cry. Like I, I say sit down, I must cry today, but nothing comes out. <laughs> so, like, okay, 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 yeah. okay. We're gonna get into this. I, we started getting into it already. I, I know you discussed this on the track with Deshi. Um yeah. when I listened to to the project, I think I told you off camera yeah. that um because you'd said, Oh, here it is, you know, it's a private link, go listen. And I was walking my dog at the time and I just noticed that. Ah, there's a lot of singing happening. Wait, this alpha rapper, rapper alpha, is this the, oh, oh, this is the project, start again. Um, and before we get into how, because it is an emotional project, yeah. um, and it does differ a fair amount to those who are familiar with your work and yeah. what they would have heard on right. pre- the previous yeah. one. So I'm curious, first of all, you took quite a break yeah. between the two. Yeah. What was up with that break? And why now to go into the conversations that you're having in this project? I feel like most of the artists that I respect, they always make it a point to say you should experience life before you go and make music. Like, you should, your music should always reflect something that's real, that's happened to you. So sometimes when people go that, like, go on like a hiatus or something, they experience a couple of things and then they put that thing into music and they come back. So that way the project has like a real, like has a meaning. And then when people listen to it, they can say, ah, this guy he has experienced some things and then he's talking about them. If you just like pump out music like all the time, it gets to a point where you are either sounding repetitive sonically or or thematically, like with the actual content. Yeah, it's just generic. Like. It's like, so okay. You're just trying to yeah. maybe do something that everybody else is doing right now so that you can just have one song that is on my piano because everybody's doing our piano. So something that sounds like it should be a hit. You get me. But has no real depth. No depth. To it. So during the period that I was away, I did not even plan to have the experiences. But, you know, during the time that I, fin- I finished my project and I was going to give myself a break to like work on another album like a full length album. So the album is actually coming like next year. But during that period, like I had a couple things that happened to me. Like I I, I, I came out of, of a relationship that affected me. And then after that, I also had like a couple of things that I had to like iron out the family and like just a couple of things that made me sit back and think about myself and start reevaluating. And I started even like I, I got into this space where I started evaluating the meaning of life, you know, evaluating my belief in God, like religion, all that stuff. And then it was just hitting me at the same time. So I was like, and this was over what space of time? I think from let's say early 2020, all the way through the year, mm. through 2021. So it was almost two years of like going through this whole finding myself. So and the things that I was struggling with, like health wise and you know, personally, everything. So it was like, if I'm making music now, I'm practically either going to be lying or or just trying to put out music because people would think I've disappeared or something. And then I got to a place where I just convinced myself that, I mean, if people really, really believe in me or if I have fans that really love my music and I am waiting for a reason, it's not like I just decided to stop doing music. When I come back with whatever I come back with, they will still appreciate it. So I just had to take that chance and then decided to write about my experiences during the period. So everything that I had to deal with, coming to terms with like grief that I hadn't unpacked for years, like I lost my mom in 07, you know, but I realized I never really dealt with that grief. Like I always used to push it back. So I did, I cried only once during that period. So you can imagine like, so, and then, you know, with the, with the whole, um, emotional roller coaster from the relationship I got out of, plus like coming to a new place in my relationship with my family where I had to like confront certain beliefs and like get them to try to unlearn certain things. So, like, all the friction and everything, I was like, maybe this is just what this is the part of adulting that doesn't make it to like social media jokes and stuff. <laughs> it's, the, it's the next level, like, and the adulting keeps leveling you know, up so I was like, in a know, way that you don't expect. 
no, whatever, whatever else, whatever is peripheral, I just cut it out and then I decided to go inside myself. And and another challenge in making the project was I didn't want to make a project where I sound like a crybaby. That's the same paradox, like the thing about men not crying. Like even when you're making a project that's supposed to be emotional and vulnerable, you're still tackling yourself in your mind. Like, so ah. so what aspect of what? What do you think would make you sound like a crybaby? I'm very curious about that. Like, yeah, basically, anytime you spill your feelings on a song, no matter how much you try to, no matter how you pattern the lyrics to sound like you don't really care about this thing you're talking about, you're just telling us a story. People will always say, ah, um, they don't serve you breakfast, you know, you don't job, something don't happen, then they'll be like, yo, why you? Okay, let's use Drake for example. Drake. You know you we know, were gonna go there. You get me? Like Drake yeah. went through this whole time where Baba was just trying to talk about his life experiences with, you know, his multiple, you know, romantic relationships and all that stuff. Baba was just letting things off his chest and the whole world and not let him be. So but he became the SI unit for This is me. But did you know come with a nice paycheck leveling up in life? Exactly. Up it. And that's exactly. the reality of what happens when soul. you allow yourself to be vulnerable. So at the end of the day, I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to end up doing the project regardless. Like, there's no way I can quote what I'm feeling. Like, I'm a lyricist, so I know I can always, like, twist words to suit whatever I'm trying to do. But at the end of the day, it has to sound like it's real. So that someone else has gone through that can actually tap in with you and, and maybe you can help them heal. I don't know. But, like, I realized that I just had to be as real as possible. So... I'm not I'm not really not even looking for what reviewers are going to say about it. I'm not looking at what the people are going to write about it or what the blogs are going to say about it. I just want to drop it and dip. <laughs> like, mm. Drop it, do all the content I'm supposed to do, promote it and dip. I just know it's out there. Like I one album that really pushed me to to do that I thought about when I was making the project that was really important for me was MI's Young Denzel because Baba put out the project at a time when nobody wanted to hear yeah. about 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 self worth and, and depression and stuff. But he put it out there because it was a conversation that needed to be had, and that project got me through that time because it was yeah. like anybody going through stuff at that time would really appreciate that project. So I'm like, who knows who might who might talk himself away from committing suicide after yeah. listening to my project. So if I do that one thing, hopefully I'm admitted into heaven after my multiple escapades. <laughs> this life. <laughs> nah, I think it's so important. I think that everybody's yeah. going through stuff and, and I asked about the time period specifically because yeah. 2020 um, is a real big shift for the entire world. Yeah. Um, nobody's ever been through a pandemic before, like we haven't. Mm. And I think it forced everybody to sort of be still and confront yeah. themselves and yeah. their demons and their realities. I swear. And to remind yourself that reality is what you make of it. Um, so going into the project proper now, I... Like I said, I had to pause, take it outside. Who is this? Um, but it's beautiful. Thank you. It's a beautiful body of work, definitely for Thank sure. Um, a track that really resonated with me was Odeshi. Oh. <laughs> um, that is the track that you do talk about losing your mom. Yeah. Um, you reference uh, your faith in God being shaken. Yeah. You guys were walking home from church. Church, yeah. And she slumped. Yeah. Um, you also reference your dad, which you've spoken about. Yeah. You know, with the red eyes. Um, I remember losing my mom uh, okay. a while back um, in 1997. My father also said, you know, if you need to cry, don't cry in front of people. He wow. said, go upstairs and cry upstairs. Be in your space. Um, and I think that for men, it is difficult to process emotions. And I realize now as an adult that perhaps what he was trying to do, especially because we were young children, was to prevent a hysterical meltdown mm. of other people. We're okay. also processing this. So to okay. see these young children going through that. Yeah. And I wonder if there's some part of your father as well that that was possibly what he was trying to yeah. mitigate, but didn't have the words. I don't even hold anything against it. Like I, I said it because that's what happened. But I'm not saying it because I don't understand it. Like yeah. I really understand it. And I feel like there's nothing you can do as a parent. Like your options are really limited when certain things hit you. Like you just have to parent in the moment. And you didn't I mean, plan for that either. Being, you yeah. get me? And he's, he, it's his wife we're talking about. So I can't, I can't even say that everything he was saying at the time was like from a place of like 100% knowing everything that he was doing. Baba was shaking too, understand? So I understand that, like I really get it. And you know how families can be sometimes, like you can really have this thing where you don't want your family to look like it's falling apart, you know, even with this monumental thing that's happened to you. So he was just probably trying to keep things together. So I understand it, but then I'm also not going to act like I don't know the effects that he had on me. Like, 
becoming an adult and stuff. So it's just coming to terms with it, yeah, yeah, processing it. Yeah. But it's powerful. Like I'm, I'm really proud of you for putting that. That sounds really cheesy. Like I'm, like I'm, like I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, but, but it's dope that you were yeah, able to put you. that down because that's a hard thing for people to yeah. talk about. It's a hard thing, and then to put that out in the world. I think to be an artist, anyways, it takes a certain level of um, courage yeah. and bravery yeah. because yeah. most people don't have the courage to put themselves on the line like that for the world to judge. So I even wonder, like, like. So sometimes I think about it like, what do I even want? To, what do I even want? Like, as an artist, do I want to be popular? Do I want to be famous? Like, I don't even know because sometimes some funny things happen, and I I look at maybe I was watching something the other day, and then an ad popped up on YouTube, and and somebody was saying that um, Tom Holland, the guy that plays Spider Man, mm-hmm. was doing a challenge. I think it's an old video. He was doing a challenge where he was doing a handstand and putting on his shirt at the same time. Mm. And he challenged Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal to do the same thing. And then the discussion was about how Ryan Reynolds, on uh, he, uh, he he put, he put up a video on the stories and then he said no, like this was the hardest no anyone had ever said. And then Tom Holland replied with three laugh cry emojis. And I'm like, why is this news? <laughs> like, why are we discussing emojis that Baba used on his stories? And I'm like. That's just what happens, like when you put your life out there, and it's a very funny example, but we talk about people like maybe Kim Kardashian or like people who have had like mixed reactions to the things they've done on social media. Mm-hmm. You know, people always have something to say about them, like negatively, positively. You know, Tiwa Savage has collected on like everybody. So once your life is out, I'm like, do I? I know I can rap, I know I'm talented, I know, but do I, do I wanna be? So sometimes I think about it like, what do I really want? So like you said, the courage, I think where I like to leave it is when I write music and just put it out there. I don't know how much of actually being a celebrity I want to do. You know, You're an artist. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about a certain level, but I feel like going forward, I want to try as much as possible to, to, to jiggle my way out of situations. I like, like that. You get me? I like that. Okay. Yeah, so in, in as much as I will be vulnerable and I will say my tell my stories because I, if I end up having a platform and then I can I say things that you know can help other people, so I will keep doing that. You know, but at the same time, like I just want to be very watchful because you know sometimes we act like we are we are hard guy, hard guy, but sometimes all the reactions and blowback, negative stuff like gets to you. So you want to just guard your guard your always guide. <laughs> Always be guiding. Always be guiding. Always be guiding. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I like that. So Alpha Genie is particularly focused on being the artist because about what he's saying yeah. and how you know you say that. It's about the craft fundamentally. Yeah. Um, anything else is side effect of how good you are at your craft. And you yeah. are good at your craft. Thank you. Not just as a rapper. Um, I see you exploring singing a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But big shout out also to how you chose, like, which singers did you choose to collaborate with? I know Maka Zonia is fantastic. Yeah. Ogarani, I don't know, I paid attention to him before, but I really did um, on this project and a couple yeah. of other people. So what were the, what influenced those choices you made yeah. for even the way that it starts? Because it starts off with music, like full singing. Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful, haunting melodies the whole way through. And of course, you're someone who mixes and masters, so yeah. you are really is your what inside. I'm watching yeah. the streets. So talk to us about that. What influenced the sound that we're yeah. hearing in this project? I feel like I feel like sometimes, like in the past, I, I, I speak about it more on my album that's coming next year. But I feel I pandered a lot on Chameleon, my last album, like. When I was making that album, I was making a lot of new friends, a lot of new artist friends, a lot of new industry friends, and I wanted to like capitalize on all my new relationships to okay. put a body of work together that made it look like I was in a new phase in my career. Because Nigeria is weird. Like we have a way of putting down people because they don't have money or because they are not like the biggest artists. Like you can just critique somebody's music now on Twitter will be like, ah, I don't really like this song and you are entitled to your opinion. But the kind of responses you will get, they are not educated opinions on why you should like the song or what you would have missed that would have made you like the song. It's straight to how many streams you get. Mm, thunder fire. You understand? Like yeah. how much you get. Baba get money, you they, you they tackle in music. So I'm like, why does the conversation never 
like face the music it's always on what you have versus what the person has also can we just say like f twitter and some no, Twitter conversation the shapiro has <laughs> said everything but i said twitter is not a real place like it's, the quotes that it's, i can live by you know like it's nice for bands sometimes yeah, but, but it's, it's not a real place i really don't base anything i do off of twitter like i just post what i need to post on an artist and leave like on instagram like i don't even have the apps on my phone like if i have to upload i upload my videos on my laptop through like facebook for business it's such a why the white road is long and winding but i'm like i'd rather do that than get notifications and likes and comments i'm like i shut that down a long time ago so i'm just basically you know just out here trying to put the music out and then just allow people sit with it okay you know not necessarily okay but the influences and how we got to this yeah yeah this sound. yeah i'm with you i'm don't worry so, that's all yeah. we're here for let's, so, let's talk about these <laughs> yeah so i mean like what what drove that was i was okay what i was trying to say in the beginning was that sometimes you can get lost in the source of like you hear what's pop- popping now you hear what music someone has put out that is doing very well so you have a song you've written already you have an idea you've crafted you now try to force that idea into a sound that works, quote unquote. So I'm like, I did that a lot on Chameleon. That was the point I was trying to make before I went. You know. So on Chameleon, I had like ideas, like the song like Calm Down. Some of the biggest songs on the project, like Sea Heaven, mm. where and Calm Down, where songs that I didn't even think were going to be good enough. Like, to be very honest with you, when I made the beats for those two songs in particular, mm. they were in a part of my hard drive where I would just like, just stash beats that are incomplete. So the, the truth of the matter is, the beat I sent to Oxlade for a collab on my last album was a different beat entirely. It was the one that I listened to it and I was like, ah, I feel like if we are doing a song together, we should do something special because me and Oxlade, we have history, like we go way back and, and stuff. So we're like, the first song we should do together, like, this is not the first song we're doing together, but like, this album was supposed to be, let me look at me strategic. Okay. Because he had like MI, he had YC, he had like all sorts of guys on it. So it was like, if we're doing one on this project, let him be. But let it not be like a banger, let it not be like we forced ourselves to make a hit. So I was like, oh, that's actually a word. So I went to those abandoned beats, quote unquote, mm-hmm. and I played him one of them. And he liked C Heaven instantly. And then in 15 minutes, we had a hook and he dipped. That's how we made that song. Dope. Calm down, the same thing. Good Girl Lily came to my studio then and I played her a bunch of beats that I thought would be good with her. Because I was trying to panda, like I was listening to everything that was popping out there. I was like, let me make beats that sound like this, let me make beats that sound like this. So I was like, and then she listened to everything and she was not feeling anyone. Then I played that random obscure beat for Calm Down and then she was like, oh, she went in and vibe. Now Calm Down is like almost everybody's favorite on the project. So now, apart from those songs, a lot of other songs I panned out. I was like, ah, if I'm making a new in a project now, I have to trust myself more. So I can't be making an emotional project where I'm trying to express myself and then be looking for Shaker and looking for looking for uh, to it and looking for things that will excite people okay. let me just go into the emotion let me find those chords that draw out emotion let me find the soul let me find people that can actually sing sing like not looking for people that can do vibes you get me like not people that will come and do uh, on a matopia and go you understand so i was looking for people that can sing so i i had okay, this like why all those things i like, got you vibe. it's let's be great you get me so i was like I, the fun, funny thing, that song with Maka was done in 2016. Mm. So we had that song for a long time. And that was a song that I really believed in. And I, I thought it was good, just not, it was too good to be like on a throwaway project or like it released as a single. Nigerians would not appreciate it as a single. Yeah. And then like it just had to be in a project where it really fits. And this was the perfect project. Yeah. I have songs like that that are like four years old, five years old, but they are still very relevant. Maybe higher style will do is maybe just tweak the lyrics a bit if they are like not like maybe something is outdated or something. But that's also I chose Maka because I felt there's nobody really doing what she does like in that soul space. Like Nigeria, we don't have a thriving soul, yeah. you know, soul space like within our like as a subgenre in the, in, in the industry. So she's like one of the only few people doing that, like singing the way she sings. So that was an amazing collab to have. So me always like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> our chemistry is proven. Yeah. Like we did this classic on my first album that, you know, because I'm an indie artist and I didn't have money to like shoot a big budget video, but that song is a classic, last last. like it's called Love Clouds. And that was the first time that we collaborated. And like, there's just this thing where anytime that we make music together, like it's always, I can't even use generic stuff like fire. Like it's always, like it has depth 
like there's meaning to it and she's such a gifted songwriter and singer like when you give her an idea the places she goes with it is just amazing like the song we did together is called namaste and i remember when i sent her the draft like i just done like an opening few lines and it was just a generic love song in the beginning like the demo i sent to her was just like a generic in fact the, i'll probably leak the demo one of these days it's very funny but like when i sent it to her the hook she now did kind of like push the song in a different direction like someone a nigerian person is writing the god in me greets the god in you who is writing mm-hmm. like who is writing that like that line alone stood out to me because it was like you are going through stuff i'm going through stuff you know but above all those things that we are going through like we have this inner person that can conquer everything aka the god in me that's and the god in you. That's you get me so recognize. the god in me sees that god in you and you can get through that stuff i can get through it too that's why we are more powerful than. so i was like you did right you get me so and then that now forced me to change my lyrics a bit and then now tweak it and make the song about like upliftment and everything so mm-hmm. and then i was trying to make the song like, so we ended up with a beautiful song that's not cheesy or preachy but like it's just and then ogranya ogranya this was the actual last song that i did for the project i was supposed to link with ogranya to work on a song for his own project but i will not lie i was actually i was actually like wasting too much time i don't know i was in the middle of like a lot of things life was happening but we had linked on Show Them Camp's album. We were together on the song Streets. Show Them Camp featured me, Moss, and Ograna. So I'd heard his voice there and I was like, oh, I'm this guy, okay, lock, lock in this idea for a future collab. So I reached out to him one day to be like, yo, bro, sorry I've not like given you the verse you asked for, but I have this idea. And I mean, I shouldn't be asking you when I have not come through for you yet. So I was like, no, 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 scrap that thing. Like, we're even going to change the song I'm doing on my project. Send me. I sent this guy the beats, which was produced by Sinex. Like that's mm-hmm. the only in my career I've had only two songs that were produced by other people. One by Benny Joe in 2015, mm-hmm. my guy from way back. Then this one, Odeshi, produced by Sinex. It's like he will never put his face on camera, but he's one of the most gifted producers that we have in this country and mix engineers. Like he has mixed some of the biggest songs in this country, like that you vibe to every day. Just chilling, low key, understand? And he's my very good friend. So. He sent me that beat and then I listened to it. I was like, yo, I need someone that can bring out the emotion on the song. So I sent it to Ogranya and that night, Baba sent me a demo of that. It's all right, the tears come from you. I was like, yo, people did this Lagos. So, you know, and that was the story with Ogranya. So when he gave me that hook, I was like, I have to go in and like talk about the things I talked about. And then that's how she came about. And then the last one, the other one, those are all the collabs. Okay, the intro, yes. COD. COD, yes. we worked together on my first album. We did, we did two songs. We did a song called Butterflies, and we did another song called, um, I can't remember the name now, that was my very first album. You know, but she's such a gifted singer, but again, you know the way this independent music industry works? Like, we have our own sub-industry of people that are very good, but we've yeah. not blown yet. Yeah. So, like, she's one of those people, super talented, can really sing, mm-hmm. you know, she mm-hmm. can perform. She's a fashion designer. She does a lot, you know, and we've worked together before. So I was like, I don't really care if people are going to ask me who this person is or say they've not heard her before or they don't know who she is. I'm like, that's not why I'm making music. I'm not making music to pack all the big people that I know on the project. When I want to make a strategic, like my next album, I'm not yeah. even, I'm not trying to pretend. My next album, I'm trying to win awards and stuff. So I'm making strategic that's the collaborations. Goal. Okay. Me. But this one, I was just going for like an honest, body of work so i put people that i knew could give me the stuff regardless of how big their social media following was or how big they were in the eyes of other people so tod maka or Grania, tomi Wo, who also did backing vocals on everything the song called everything i thought i thought I, in fact this whole singing thing i used to say i, I did manage i tried everything sounded so beautiful then i wonder i thought i was like let me just try and ask tomi to like do some backing vocals on this song and then i sent it to her she sent me like stacks, stacks of vocals. Vocals everywhere, harmonies, <laughs> ad libs, everything. I had a hard time even cutting down like yeah. things to size. By the end of the day, I was like, why didn't I think of this earlier? So all around, the music is now very beautiful, it's rich because I actually decided to, you know, reach out to people who can actually add to the project. Because sometimes being such a DIY guy, I could be tempted to like do a lot of things alone. I could do the Jekyll thing and pull a new features project. I'm like, mm. it's better you make a project that actually speaks to what you're trying to say. And then, mm. you know, if you, if you need to feature the right people, do that. I think that this project has done a phenomenal job of 
highlighting and showcasing incredibly talented singers. Thank you. Because it is definitely something that I kept going back like, who is this? Who is singing? What, what's happening here? What like it is sonically such a beautiful body of work to listen to. Thank and you. it can sit on loop, on endless loop, depending on the emotional state you are in. Yeah. I tell you, like, no, I need to get something hard, man. Oh, tired of being in my feelings.